And there we go again. It's game number two. Hee hee. This time maybe United, not just normally United. No, just maybe. Versus Trick. They took game number one. So it's 1-0 for Hee Hee. And let's see if Trick can come back or if this is a really short free or 2 0 in a best of three. I hate my intros today. <laughs> Let's hop into the draft. Well, we can actually see already that Trick the Esports, they've learned their lesson from game one. They do ban out the Nyx Assassin, but he, he in return, they ban out the Dazzle as well. This Dazzle was actually spot on with the Shallow Graves. Unfortunately, he, he just had too much of an advantage for the Shallow Graves to actually matter. But still, the Dazzle actually had somewhat of an impact nevertheless, so. Somewhat tough respect bands going out. But of course that leaves strong heroes in the pool and he he they get their hands on the ancient apparition. That Keep hero talking. is just too strong to pass up as well, I think. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to write something. Here. Yeah. But now Trick D Sports in return, the Lycan actually did not get banned. So Batrider picked up by Trick and will we see the Lycan as well now? I mean, I don't think they actually realize or trick these sports. They might not be used to playing the Lycan themselves because it's actually quite hard to practice with that hero because it just gets banned out all the time. So lots of teams actually don't even know how to utilize that hero that well. So the Batrider, of course, a really strong initiation hero, usually goes for the offlane position. But trick these sports, they really might not even consider the Lycan. They, well, Centaur, not an option, I think. Lycan. So, yeah, the Lycan is still picked up. Thank God. And we have at least some potential push, but he, he, they go for the Centaur that worked out so well in the first game. And if the Centaur with the Blink gets in, gets the Hoof Stomp, and if the Ice Blast hits that that's same target with the Double Edge as well, he's going to shatter, like, almost 100%. Yep, yeah, and I'm back. I just wrote something in uh, one of our German channels. Anyway, what do we have? We have a Lycan. I didn't even look at the screen and, and it's already chaos breaking out. Lycan. Well, I can't say chaos because if it's not banned, it's quite obvious it's going to get picked, man. It's it's insanity. It's it's uh, This is ludicrous. Like, Lycan. Like, we cast, I don't know, every day, I don't know, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, up to 10 games on a weekend, even more. And... Lycan never gets picked, it's always first banned material on either team and now finally he makes it through. It's been probably a week I casted a Lycan, so I'm happy. Well, <laughs> let's hope there's a reason to be happy about as well in the game. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, we have an awesome initiation with the Batrider. He got through, we have the pushing potential coming out by the Lycan. Now, if they p just pick something that really synergizes very well with the Lycan, I'm already looking forward. The only downside is, of course, they phase AA, which is, yeah, well, it is a nuisance, to say the least. And actually, he, he, I think they made some pretty nice target bans, banning out the Visage, so no familiars together with the Howl, and of course, no Mass Serpent Wars for the extra push as well, although Nature's Prophet is still in the pool, yep. but that would mean it's gonna have to be either a jungling Nature's Prophet, mid lane nature's prophet or just bat rider mid then yeah that's the problem that's really the biggest problem even though we don't know what's coming out for he he in mid maybe they're really man mode and go for nature's prophet mid <laughs> uh, they definitely could go for it i mean and it's not like the bat rider mid is a bad matchup yeah, as well, well like, against yeah, most that, heroes that would be the second option i mean but put that bat rider in the mid get the nature's prophet offlane you go for a standard necro build the Lycan in a tri lane whatsoever or and that would absolutely fit like what's important is that you get heroes or even minions or minion spam that scares perfectly with the howl this is what we like mostly we see Lycan's win where like we have exactly this draft up because it's just so powerful especially on the early towers the tier ones so I'm really looking forward if this is coming out or if they just have the Lycan as the single pusher and the rest just goes for a solid fight build yeah, I've seen lineups work like that as well, just like an... Especially if they get, get like one single pick off, they have so much pushing power, even from that one hero. But I do like Trick D Sports, their bands as well, going for the Naga as well as the Puck Chest. Two heroes that can hold down the Lycan, even if he's shapeshifted with the Ensnare, as yeah. well as the Dream Coil. 
Yep, definitely. So, yeah, the Lycan so far is looking for some counterpart that actually can really hold Mirana. him. I mean, right now we have one stun with the Mirana, another stun, which is uh, uh, just hard to hit actually on him. So, yep, they secured that there's no Dream Coil, there's no Ensnare, and the Rubik as well as a pick. So, I guess it goes into a Lycan push plus four. <laughs> Solid fight. I mean, I like their I like their draft last game as well. They just did this mistake that the Nax didn't get through and farm. I mean, a Nax ending up after a try lane, which wasn't too bad after all, but ending up like XP wise and farming wise like somewhere between I don't know sandwich structure between the uh, supports. That's just not how it should be. Like he had like a small intermezzo in the jungle, but like that didn't get him back on track like he instantly TP'd into the next fight died there right after his rage was, was running off so I really hope Trick this time puts more focus on their cause because that was for me at least as a caster watching this in third person but like for me this was the main reason they lost the last game yeah and actually speaking of getting the carry heroes farm do you think he, he actually might go for another aggressive try lane because against the Lycan, that's the most efficient way to actually stop the Lycan from doing anything in a game. Yep. That, I mean, you need something that, that gives him at least some contra right at the start of the game. So he doesn't snowball right away. Because as soon as he gets level, alone the wolves, they are such a nuisance to like... For example, wolves on an AA with Howl up. <laughs> this is not funny. From level 3 wolves on, you can pretty much solo an ancient apparition just with those wolves with Howl up. This is not even funny, so they need to prevent a snowballing Lycan, but it is an Enchantress. Like, where is this draft going? So this is a bad rider mid. Lycan Rubik on... I don't know where. And the Enchantress then, like, the semi try. But, I don't know. Do they pick then a complete offliner? I don't know if this is working. I mean, the only upside is now, okay, we have Enchantress Creeps, like a mini army coming out that gets also, like, that benefits from Storm the Howl. But then again, yeah, he he is now picking their mid-hero. And with the Storm Spirit, with the Vortex coming out, they have finally something that can hold the Lycan. Like, Storm Spirit is fast enough. He can get the Lycan, the Vortex up into Centaur, uh, stun, maybe even the Cold Feet up, and the Arrow just to make sure. But yeah, now they got the means to actually stop a Lycan. Yeah, and actually, tricked. I mean, I got no idea. They could still go for like a mid lane Death Prophet or maybe even a Pagna. Death Prophet would be preferable to me just for him having the silence against the Storm Spirit and the Mirana. But Trick, they ban out the Disruptor because he, he, they actually have three heroes they had in the last game as well. And of course, the Disruptor, he did so much work and the Kinetic Field would be able to lock down the Lycan as well, so mm. nice ban there. I don't know, I just I just don't like it. I just I have to be bluntly honest there, I just don't like the draft at the moment because I just don't see where like usually with the Lycan I'm always happy to see, I don't know, at least two heroes, maybe three heroes that go for Necro, at least one or two of them having the capability to summon whatever minions, may it be Nature's Prophet, Chen, Enchantress, anything, anything coming out, of course, and the trains. So you get this this big howl army with the massive right clicks out, but like tricked. I don't know, they got the Lycan secured, but I don't think they they want to rely too much on it. They want to go for something else. But right now, I just don't, don't see their draft in a big picture. He, he, so far, definitely having the better draft on my charts. They ban out the Disruptor, <laughs> which is definitely also another protection ban for the Lycan. Because, yeah, the Glimpse could definitely <laughs> be very dangerous for the Lycan. And they ban out the Doom. Which is, I guess, an obvious choice because the Doom would be another aura bringer. Plus, of course, the Enchantress creeps. Plus, uh, Lycan aura. Plus, Rubik aura. Plus, the Necro aura. So, no aura stacking there for Drake. But I don't know. What is the last hero for them then? I do have to say, Death Prophet. Man, they go for the Tree and Protector. Okay. Okay. So, who's who's doing the damage in this game? And how are they gonna lane this? That, that's my next question, yeah. Is is Rubik gonna be mid then? Or is it just a farming tree end? I well, I guess I we'll no see idea. soon enough. Well, it might be like like and mid. 
Bat Rider offlane, Rubik, Enchantress, Treant going mad. But what they actually it? could go for an aggressive tri lane with the Treant as well, maybe. It could be also offlane trained. I mean, it's the Triyama is global, so you could put the Bat Rider mid, trained offlane, and the rest make it a semi tri with Enchantress just sneaking in and out of the jungle. But I don't know, as I said, I don't see how this draft is working at all because whatever they pick up there is just so much they have to counter also Rubik and Chant restrain protect the uh, batch rider low HP heroes they're really vulnerable to ice blasts if that ice blasts hit just two or three people in a team fight I just don't see how they want to get through it the the armor doesn't heal anything the the nature's attendance they they don't heal anything it's like even the lifesteal by all the Vladimir's is negated they have to counter push with it the Storm Spirit into Central Warner and the Mirana is enough lockdown for a Lycan, even a nice counter against the bat. Like, draft wise, I have no idea what Trick is going for, but I mean, maybe they totally prove me wrong and they get this through, but I don't know. Me as a caster, I'm, I'm quite baffled about this setup. Yeah, I can't say I really expected such an outcome either. And he, he actually did go for the twin headed, <laughs> twin headed dragon, the Jakiro, as the last pick. I mean, he has some counter push. Has a pretty nice lockdown as well. I mean, the ice path has such a huge area that it covers that Lycan most likely will get caught by it in the end. Yep, definitely. And now, well, they picked all the heroes. There's at least no surprise. But yeah, let's see how this goes. I'm very curious about the laning. Indeed. <laughs> so am I. And well, he, he, if they're thinking that Trick Esports won't go for an aggressive dry lane, then I think they should go for one themselves. But if Trick is going to try lane the Lycan at all, and if they're going to go aggressive with it, then he, he definitely have to respond to make sure that the Lycan doesn't have a good time. Yep. And there we go. Anyway, we go for a fast introduction. Chips is this time on the AA. BBC on the Storm Spirit. Nihis is, is playing... <laughs> <laughs> Hava with his tea. This is hilarious. Every single time we wait in the lobby for his tea, we wait in game for his tea. It's, it's this guy is just crazy. I really like him. Anyway, Ni is on the Chakiro. By the way, I really like to see Chakiro. It's been a while. So Hava, Mr. T, is on the Marana, and last but not least, Kai Butsu is on the Center Warana. And for Tricked on the Radiant side, Balsam will be playing the Lycan with Silver Haze on the Enchantress. Leaving Fire on the Tree and Protector, Korean Zombie on the Batrider and Rosa playing the Rubik. So with Fire being on the Tree and Protector, he was playing the Axe last game. So <laughs> off lane Tree and by the looks of it, yeah. Oh I wonder if he's still mad about his Tranker Boots. Like he's he's gonna end up like for those people who didn't see it like the Tranker Boots steal, you're gonna see it today as a highlight on our YouTube channel. Like it was really nice. Mirana leap into uh, destroying the Tranquil Woods of Axe, like, and I announced it like two minutes before that this is really dangerous what he does there, and yeah, it actually happened, so, yeah, he just won a spot on our YouTube highlights. Anyway, the game is resumed, and now the most important part is how do they lane this? I'm so curious about this. I mean, for he he, the laning is kind of obvious, but here for Tricked, a very unusual draft, and how does this work? We see, yeah, this is Batrider mid, by the way. Like, two shared tangos. 475 left, that means he's going for a battle rush, and it is mid. Then we have the Dream Protector off. I was right. I was right. Yeah, it is Batrider mid, the Dream Protector offlane, and we see a semi try with Enchantress, I don't know, at some point hopefully joining that lane. I guess they need to. On the other side, we see, yep, not a surprise, we see a Krasif try. Kaibutsu is solo farming and in the mid, obviously no surprise to Storm Spirit. But yeah. Say oh, it. Right. Say it. I was what? right. You were right. Okay. You're the master, man. Master <laughs> no, of the universe. You're the one who's right. But today, <laughs> today I got something right at least. By the way, it's so hard for me to just call Kaibutsu Kaibutsu. It's every Kaibutsu. time I see that name I think of monster because that's what it means in Japanese. Really? It means monster? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Talking about monster, like about this world, there is nothing really monster. It is. <laughs> what? The what? <laughs> that that was the worst, like transition ever, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was not. By the way, we just saw a nice little wolf feed. Actually, both wolves are getting fat to, to Chakero. He's really happy about this. 
He just got 102 gold from this, but either way, like this ward is just a traditional ward giving wish into the bottom room, and so far nothing else is coming out. Yeah, they're really conservative with their wards. I mean, there's still two observers on Shakira. I guess they want to know what lane they're facing. If they face the tri lane, they're probably going to place maybe one ward behind the tower. Oh, actually, they want to go in already. Here also at the ice path. Does hit him as well. The arrow is there, but it's barely getting dodged. He takes a lot of damage from the chilling touch anyway, but oh. will escape. Oh, chips go so deep. He takes some tower damage as well. Oh, Unfortunately, so they close. don't have the third hero. This was so close, like I think this this hit would have made the difference there. With the chilling touch that might have been the first blood, but yeah. Okay, it's getting interesting already. And I have to say Rosa was just excellent arrow dodge there. But Enchantress actually in the enemy jungle at the moment. Yep. So this centaur might be in a lot of trouble soon. Yeah, I was actually wrong about this because I actually thought the Enchantress is gonna start in the Radiant Jungle and then make this like a semi tri lane with her in and out rotating, but she is actually on the other side. And now, what is she doing? I mean, is she creep skipping here? This is actually dangerous oh, what she does. They want there. to go in now. The slow is not there actually. He has it available, he uses it now as well. Centaur gets the shockwave, but actually, those are not the best creeps for the gang. Finally, the lead sheet comes out, but Kaibutsu so no. way too far away already. But at least they achieved something, like the first TP rotation comes by chips and, well, even though this is just 135 gold down the train, it is at least something. And Santa Warner also using the self, so this is another 100 gold consumable down the train. Oh, so. <laughs> Mirana actually got telekinesis under the tower but had the leap to get away. Still dropped quite low, so has to use tangos. And actually oh, lots of consumable. Mid. Oh, <laughs> look at mid, like... Oh god, 10 stacks, how the hell did he survive that? 10 stacks, but Batrider didn't go further, that that was very interesting, he's playing so conservatively here. Like, he was so close to get that first blood on the Storm Spirit, that would have meant, like, winning the mid lane, but, like, he stopped here. He was about here, Storm Spirit there, and I don't know why he didn't go for it. How can you not go for a 10 stack kill? I have I have no idea that it's was... It's like, I, I, I don't think I've ever seen 10 stacks on anybody. Without them dying at least. Yep, but they want to go again, but the problem is the Storm Spirit found the Illusion Rune. Like, he's full HP, almost full mana. Not, I mean, if he would use his bottle, but yeah. And then Chantress also got the wrong creeps. I mean, now a Centaur... Well, the stun could help now, but I think Ensnare would be much better. They're going in as well. Two stacks of Sticky Napalm. Firefly activated Storm Protection. This time he might be in trouble. Third stack of Sticky Napalm. There's the War Storm coming out. Oh, and that's first Batrider drop for the might die. No, he actually tr managed to shift the acro there. Really nice. He survives with 40 HP. This is the first blood. Yeah, so Korean Zombie, really happy for it. He does have to go back to base just to reach an up, but he'll take it any day. Yep. Surprise, surprise, like after he gave this first blood away, pretty much, I think he could have gotten it, but yeah, he kind of reconciliates there and yeah, gets it back. But then again, Tree is now sort of in trouble, I mean, he gets the experience, that's the only good thing, but overall, like farm-wise, he's not getting much, I mean, he's 10 and 3. Well, still, I think Trick is quite happy of having the Ancient Apparition rotate top because Lycan has a lot of an easier time, I mean, it's not easy by any means still, but having to face a dual lane versus a dual lane, it's just so much better than, than facing a tri lane. Yeah, but now I think we might see a dangerous little mark in the game because the Storm Spirit is getting an invisibility rune. The question is now, uh, the Rubik, Hava actually, no, uh, Horoso tried to deny it from the uphill, but no, didn't work. Yeah, a pretty nice try to be honest, but oh, there's the electric portal onto the Batrider, chilling touch as well, just for some extra harass. And Storm Spirit now, he should feel rather safe, even if he does get sticky napalm up, he has the invis to rely on. Yeah, and by the way, the Jakiro went for the 1-1-1 one, one, one build, and I guess he's just gonna max out Ice Path, or I mean, not max out, but the next one should go into Ice Path, because they need that one, one more longer re re duration for the arrow setup. It's actually so hard to skill build a Shakira nowadays because the liquid fire is so strong with the yeah, change. It but yeah, like you said, they do need the ice buff as well for the longer duration, just for the Mirana arrow to actually hit as well. Yeah, but level 2 is enough pretty much. Like if she's on a, I don't know, just 
Oh, Enchantress coming in with the smoke. Smoke does get popped already and chips. Goes for the sentry warding troll trap. Coming in the ice path. Buying some time, but there's the telekinesis as well. AA is gonna take a oh, fall. Oh, and they get the D ward with that. Uh, unless the Mirana. Oh, they don't go for it. <laughs> Rosa does deny his own at least, but okay. they see the observer ward as well with it. That that's interesting that they didn't try to contest this D ward attempt. They could have tried to. Everybody just hit the the sentry ward, and that would have been a wasted sentry ward there because it was also the last one on the Jakiro. So that would have actually hurt them keeping the vision. But now, like it's just a matter of time till they come back to finish this observer ward, and this is another 50 gold. I mean, it's it's just 50 gold, but well, well, there and there's Mr. Jakiro. No, don't they? What don't they actually see? There, I don't. I think he just. Doesn't want to put himself in danger there. Yep. And then Rubik actually picks up the double damage rune. He does not give it to the Batch Rider. I guess, yeah, because the bottle is anyway not up. And it's just, yeah, it's just on the Y from the base. So he said, like, nah, just take it. And the tree will reach level 6, by the way. The question is, what is the tree going for? He already got his arcane boots. He quite, he picked up in farm. I mean, it's 36 for the scent and 21 for the tree. That's not too bad after all. It's definitely not too bad, but it's not the most optimal thing about Oni. He's actually taking some damage. If he gets the Lekinesi stuff as well, those wolves do a lot of damage. The Howl not yet used, but Jakiro will take a fall anyway. Leap by Mirana coming out as well, but there's the living armor onto the Rubik. And oh, the Stampede Mirana, will he escape? No, he will not. The Rubik with the double damage. This double damage plus the Howl that did so much work there. Double kill for him. He's going to be a happy support. But in mid, you see Storm Spirit going across it, but... Did he even use the Vortex? No, he did not. He saw the rotation of the Treen incoming and he knows Treen is level 6. The Overgrowth would be ready. And then, yeah, Overgrowth on 2 under the tower. That would have had a deadly end. But yeah, tricked. I didn't give them any credit for the draft they did. But so far, it's 4 0. And oh, but now they go in mid. Yeah, will the Living Armor actually be enough? He's taking no damage almost. The Living Armor stacks did get eaten through really fast, but still, Korean Zombie healthy as a horse still. <laughs> healthy as a horse. <laughs> oh, I love that expression. Yeah, man, but really he took like almost no damage, although the Centaur didn't actually get in range for the Hoof Stomp and Double Edge either. Oh, and the Treen is going man mode on the AA. Yeah. But Leech he's... is there a few right clicks, but the Cold Feet actually will yeah, proc they will there. Proc. But Rubik, Rubik might be fast. I think he's gonna get the Telekinesis, he has the boots as well, but it's they won't chase 340 versus 345. So no, he did not really have a chance to get it, and Moonlight Shadow is coming out at the same time. This Observer Board, this is actually interesting. If this was a Sentry, I would have understood it, but... The Observer Board directly in front of the tower. I mean, now they see whenever some something is coming in as a rotation. But still, very interesting. He might have ha actually had a chance to angle him there. Like, if you if you go this way and, and AA goes this way, you might have had a chance for the lift. But, I don't know. Either way, we have now four of Hee Hee in the bottom lane. And Lycan might be in danger. I mean, he's level 6. The center yeah. does not have the dagger. He seems like he's going for a pipe rush. They can only do it with the stampede if they want, or maybe Storm Spirit getting the initiation, oh, but they don't yeah. even go for it. Then top, they're going for it, and chips goes down. Tree and protector. That right click oh. hurts so much, but center for the lichen here. Yeah. Yeah. Can they actually spot him out, Mirana? There's the frost breath, dual breath, whatever, slowing him down. And Balsam still alive. They're not initiating or whatsoever. There's TP's coming in, Shapeshift coming out as well. Lasso not there. The Stampede got used as well, but Shapeshift just going man mode. Balsam has to finally back off. There's the Leaf coming out with yeah. the Firefly knee. He's definitely gonna fall on the Chakiro. But will they get the few counter kills? Telekinesis onto the Storm Spirit, into the Lasso. He's gonna fall, I think. A few right clicks will do the job. Can they get more Rubik falling to the hands of the Ancient Apparition at least? And Balsam, his ultimate wears off, but. They still oh, can't go the center is actually blocking him here. He wanted to hide, but the center by the enchanter is still there. He's like, hey man, please go, micro skills. But this yeah, this was such a weird fight. Yeah, this was such a weird engage of Hee Hee there. Like, I mean, they were solo under the tower versus the Lycan, but I don't know, the center war are not coming. The Stampede eventually used Oh, enough. Ice Path with the Ice Blast as well, but the arrow doesn't even come out. Will there be a short range one at least? Yes, there is. Or no, no there isn't, what the hell am I talking about, the electric vortex will be there, yeah, or not fine. even necessary, finally they grabbed the kill on Batrider. Yeah, but what resources spent on this, like super long, was this a regeneration rune, because 
No, now he has a regeneration on bottom, yeah. Uh, this storm is gonna be really happy about this. He's also level 8 now. It gives him a slight advantage. Looking at the net worth. Centaur actually in trouble top lane. There's no mana for the overgrowth to keep him in place in center. With the Moonlight Shadows, he wants to turn it around, but he can't get in range. Still no blink there. And oh, Telekinesis, Ice Flash, Ease. There's some Rosa. We'll take a downfall as well. But Ruby killed off the center just before. But the center going man mana. Moonlight is fading, so he can actually dive this if he wants to. Yeah, actually, he might go for it, leaving armor, coming off cooldown, but he can't quite <laughs> no, chase him down. Now around the Rosie. <laughs> yeah, just the best. <laughs> That's the best what the AA probably could have done there. And in the meantime, the Chakiro. And, oh, too bad. Ooh. The Lycan tried to actually get the deny here with his wolves, but, yep, yeah, too bad, didn't get it. But anyway, this is a center for a Rubik trade and at the same time a tower loss. So I guess slightly in favor for he -He there, but just slightly. Yeah, definitely only slightly, because actually the, even though he, he went for an aggressive tri lane to begin with, Lycan is still the highest net worth, only by 200 gold, but still, that's oh, not shutting down the hero. Oh yeah, it's... Ice Blast with the Electric Vortex, that should be an easy kill, but there's the Telekinesis into the counter Electric Vortex and battery, I don't shatter. think he's gonna shatter, yeah. No, he's not. He's oh, bottom him. lane though, they're going on Nihis, Shapeshift was popped, Mirana does come in, wants to get the counter kill, but actually might fall down, has to back off, oh, Enchantress drops solo, there's the leap as well, Arrow, actually hitting Lycan, and there's no Shapeshift, Storm Spirit coming in, they're gonna grab two kills this for it, double. I can't, yeah. can't be out there. Ah, uh, there we go, there's the double kill for the Storm, nicely done, like, his long sip, first for the Enchantress, I thought like, oh my god, they might now miss the, uh, the Lycan, but... Was successful. Double kill for the storm. He's really happy about it. This really helps him with, yep, with his orchid. He's going for orchid. And now, the tree is no. Who is pinging? The ancient apparition is actually pinging. Yeah, because the ice blast is coming in. But there will be no. Oh, oh, tree was just about to run in there. Really unfortunate. But even with that, I'm not too sure if it would have been enough actually. Yeah, the ice blast, double so edge, tanky. roof stomp. If that all would have hit, and I think he even had. Yeah, he would have had the mana for... No, but no, Stampede wasn't ready. Maybe with the additional damage of the Stampede, that would have made a difference. But yeah, would have really close. Yeah, it actually might have been possible. And as I was saying like one minute ago, that Lycan is the highest net worth now. Storm oh, Spirit, Rubik. he's gonna find Rosa. Oh, Ice Blast spent for it as well. I think yeah. that was an overkill. Easiest kill of his life, that poor Rubik. Yeah, and actually, yeah, Storm Spirit now ahead in net worth. If they get this tower as well, that's getting Storm Spirit really, like, dangerously close to the Orchid already. Yep, this is a relatively close Orchid. And, yeah, it also brings, I don't know, Center Warrunner now keeps on farming, probably getting the tower pretty soon unless there is a defense. I see them rotating probably. So that will bring them in, like, one, two, and third position in net worth. It's definitely something you don't want to see. Like, at the start it was working out, but now they go on the center. Yeah, they will get the kill maybe. There's a nice stampede coming out. Ice Blast hits both of them as well. Rosa drops over. There's the overgrowth onto chips, and Batrider will come in with the lasso. The Moonlight Shadows do get deployed, but under the tower they can still see him. Yep, no need for any <laughs> Oh, but bottom lane, Enchantress just... Oh... Surrounded by three heroes, goes down to the arrow as well, and Lycan pops his shapeshift to escape. The Kirtu tower almost taken down, but Lycan will be able to escape. Yep, but oh, not in deny range. Instead, they might actually pressure the other tier one. So still a one for one after all this fighting. Pretty interesting, but what's also pretty interesting is that the Rubik, he didn't buy any wards or sentries whatsoever because he saved his mana. We see now a second pair of arcane boots coming out. I don't know if that was really worth it because this not having sentries against the Moonlight Shadow that might have flipped back there but just glad that the tier 1 was still standing so the lasso actually gave the vision under the tower but now the Lycan goes into tower push mode that's uh, like a good thing for Trick because they need the gold desperately and Balsam gets the last hit for it as well and actually three heroes pushing the tier 1 top but Treant has to blink overgrowth off cooldown as well there's the macro fire though and oh, long range chip from the Storm Spirit going for the Rubik. There's the Living Armor Leech. It doesn't help enough. Overgrowth finally comes out. Ice Path missing as well. And Fire should be able to escape, but Rubik still going down with how casual it is. Yeah, but at the same time, the Lycan is trading this. 
Cold Stampede does come out, but they're just going for the Enchanter's Double H with the Hoof Stomp is there. Cold B do proc as well, he's gonna fall down. But there's the Lasso onto the center with the Lycan right clicking away at him. But it's just so damn tanky, oh my freaking well, maybe god. It's this, maybe it is enough, look at this. Oh, they might get chips, actually they might kill both. The tower did get destroyed oh. as well and they double kill for nice one. zombie they, Korean. Yep, they trade the Enchantress and they get the tower and two kills on top of it. So this definitely better trade for Tricked, way better. The only thing they had to give up for it is the Rubik and a tier one top. This, I mean, that's the power of Lycan chest. Those towers drop so fast. Yep, definitely. But it's actually we have to look at the crafts. Like, all the time, like Tricked had a gold advantage of not much, like 1,500. And now we look actually, yeah, it flipped back on Hehe's he side, but now it's back to zero almost. And with XP, <laughs> the craft is showing oh, at the Storm moment. Spirit goes in, gets the Orchid onto the Lycan with the Electric Vortex. I think it should be enough to get the kill. Or nope. no, Living Armor is just so strong and he's gonna turn it around. Moonlight Shadow's coming out. Storm Spirit, oh my god, he's almost dying. Oh, oh. sent your get deployed. <laughs> oh, my nice. god, Baseball, to get the kill. The Rubik just there in time. And now the Howl is still up. Like, if they are fast top, they can actually do some significant damage. Oh, awesome. His ultimate runs out. HWI will he get the arrow? No, Crosser comes in, steals the Moonlight Shadow oh, actually. Top. Oh god. Yeah, they used the Moonlight sh Shadow just stolen by the Rubik, so they will be safe. Yeah, and this is really nice because the other team doesn't expect that there is a Moonlight Shadow coming out. None of them has dust or sentries or anything similar. So, but they're still hanging around here. They should know there's three. They have to be really careful. I mean, Tree has the dagger just as well as the Batrider, but still. With the Ice Path, it's actually hard to dodge the Ice, pa ice Path if he's coming from high ground oh, to low ground. I can actually cut the tower with both the Mirana and Centaur being there. That's uh, Necro Archer <laughs> finishing it up. Yep, and I was the funny thing is I was talking about Networth and how he, he will probably take over the first three spots, but now we see actually the Lycan after the two towers he got there and the Batrider after the double kill he got. Like we see them in the first and second spot. So it's going again better for he, he uh for Tricked. Yeah, just those towers, both like two tier two towers down already, plus I think the tier one on top isn't gonna stand for too long either. Special is like and now has the Necro level 3 finished 17 minutes in with the Vlad's offering. He's just picked up so much pace and he, he has to stop him soon. Yep, I mean it's 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 not that fast considering if he like if he had free firm, it's not the fastest, but like considering how oh, oh Stormspring goes in, yeah. Orchid is there, electric vortex not even necessary, few right clicks and orchid tick <laughs> will finish him up. Yeah, no, but like considering how, how this lane was going, definitely. Oh, oh yeah, they're going onto the Mirana straight away, but nice leap. There's the hoof stomp, arrow onto fire as well. Batrider will almost take a fall, but will be able to get away. And fire gets the TP out as well with the living armor tanking up for him. <laughs> nice. What a greedy try to go in there. Like, Centaur almost ruined their day. But like, with the living armor and of course the Batrider being so fast with the full stuff away into the jungle. Like, really nice. Both getting out. I didn't expect this one. I actually yeah. was already shouting for a double kill there. Yeah, I really thought, I mean, as I saw Mirana blink, uh, TPing in, and then the Korean zombie just went for the blink, wanted to get the Lasso, but immediate leap out by Mirana. Yep. Oh, really? actually, now he gets Lassoed up, and will there be any follow up? Actually, it doesn't look like it, so the leap should be enough, and Moonlight but, Shadow's just in case. But that's good. I mean, the Moonlight Shadow being out, that's. That's pretty much nice. And Lycan uses all his mana for Wolves, Howl, and the ultimate and picks right after a regeneration rune. Oh, and the Ice Blast was fishing for him, but yeah, not hitting whatsoever. So Lycan being happy, he knows that this is a very low cooldown. I mean, it's 70 seconds for the level 2. So all he wants is now his level 3. The only thing I really don't like is um, they don't do anything against Hihi's aggressive warding. I mean, this ward is... is here already the second ward. This ward just got dewarded, but like also the observer is running out. If they would have some vision around the Rosh pit after a nice fight, they could just sneak into a Roshan, but they have to get the upper hand on the vision there. Yeah, the vision war is definitely really important at the moment because tricked they can't really go push too well unless they have vision. Because Lycan he wouldn't be safe otherwise, he's still susceptible to just getting picked off by the Orchid. Oh. Nicely done. The Storm Spirit was about to find an invisibility rune, but he didn't use his sub there. 
Now he's stuck with a third of his life missing and the Rubik being the lucky one who denied it. And now, as the answer comes, a four-man smoke. Yeah, I think they might find the storm as well. The storm only 500 HP. Lasso initiation is a certain death for him and there's the blink lasso. Leech hit just in case and impetus actually from the enchantress finishes the job. So Yep, easy kill there. This is like double loss for the storm. First he's missing the rune, now he's dying and we probably see a tower falling here. Yeah, and actually with the tower as well, Enchantress is really close to his own Aghanim Scepter. If he gets stabbed at level 11, his right clicks are gonna hurt a ton and oh, Centaur might be in trouble. They have the Nature Skies. Oh, Ice Blast actually flying. They're gonna go in with the Stampede as well. They get the stun. Cross on the Ruby getting picked off immediately, but Balsam, so much right click. There's a four-man Overgrowth Fire just doing the plays on the tree and Protector. Two heroes down, actually three. With the buyback on the storm and ice path, trying to hit something but misses absolutely everything and now blink with the firefly from the Korean zombie balsam. Just going to right click down the check hero and Mirana actually gonna fall as well I think. The leap gonna come off cooldown. He's gonna be safe flame break. Not in time nope. there. There oh, it God. goes. Really nice. This is a complete team wipe if you consider the storm being killed before. But I really like how they communicated there and like split up. They knew the Shakira was out of everything, out of mana. The Ice Path already came out, so the Lycan was about to finish him. And the Batrider didn't pay attention whatsoever to the Shakira. He knew that the leap was out of the Mirana. So he just went, got the stacks up and eventually got the kill. So this is the nice communication coming out of this team. This is really important because that makes sometimes a difference. So they get, oh, and Storm finds the Batrider. That's too bad. 576 gold to Storm Spirit. This is pretty much what he needed. Exactly what he needed. And now. Oh, but oh. counter zip in with the telekinesis. Rosa, double damage rune. Fateful. Actually, he's going so deep. <laughs> Storm Spirit out of mana. A few more right clicks is all they need. But there's the chilling touch coming out. With the living armor, one more right click. And actually gets the kill. <laughs> he's gonna fall for it. But what a play. Yeah, what a Rubik play, man. That was amazing. Like, he was like, Storm. I can do that as well, just give me ultimate. <laughs> he was actually just right clicking him down. There was no, there was not even Howl coming to the help. That's the funny thing. If there was Howl, I think they might have managed it. And now, by the way, it comes to the point where I already said the Ward War is not won by Trick. They might have had a better team fight whatsoever, but now, I mean, they have the Wolves, and the Wolves see that they go for Roshan, but like Ward wise, this was just a lucky guess pretty much that they are on Roshan. The Roche is so slow that and tree, actually, that tree yeah, is the going tree is for steel. In overgrow. I tell you, this tree is going for steel. Oh, there's the ice blast coming out. There's the oh to get the double hoof stop double edge into the ice blast. Macro fire as well. Balsam has to go away. But is the tree coming in actually? He got hit by the ice blast as well. But oh finally the last so onto the Mirana. Mirana's gonna go down straight away. The ice path doesn't help anything and now they're gonna take the Roche for himself. Yep. They're so fast finishing that rush. Or is the centaur trying to jump in? No. There's... Oh, they like him. Just picked it up. Really nice. Yeah, so... Chien going in. Leech it onto the Chikiro. Korean zombie there as well. And Chikiro gonna take a fall. This game is just yeah. falling apart for he he really. At the moment, it's really looking like it. I, I was so pessimistic at the draft, but... Trick is getting it through at the moment. And the funny thing is, it all comes down to a Storm Spirit being soloed by a damn Rubik with a nice play. <laughs> Definitely does. Oh, nice hoof stomp double H. Rosa gets taken down immediately. Orchid onto the Korean zombie with the electric board. But he has to back off the right click from Balsam. Just too much for them to handle. And they get the tier 3 tower for it now as well. Yep. Oh, they go in. Another hoof stomp with the double H. But the <laughs> living armor is just so damn strong. Enchantress. Still alive, Mirana wants to come in. Actually, they kill off the Batrider, but the center falls down as well. Enchantress, though, gonna get chased down, I think. Definitely feels like it. The Orchid is not used. They don't even need it. Or do they? <laughs> they leave Living Armor Urn as well. I can't still believe she's running. still on the run. Finally, leap into Arrow yeah. Electric Vortex. <laughs> but, well, she took at least off. But, I mean, after all, they got the Ages. They kept the Ages, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the Ages still on the Lycan. They got quite some kills there and a tier 3 tower on top of it, the Roshan. Absolutely looking good for a trick and we used that little pause to just show the graphs. There is more than 5000 gold lead at the moment on Tricked and we see yeah, approximately about the same uh, experience wise for Tricked. So it's looking good but 5000 is not much considering we are at minute 25. So a bad team fight, maybe the next Roshan 
it could definitely turn in favor for Hihi anytime. Yeah, they're gonna have to work hard for it though, just for the fact that this Lycan is around 5.5k net worth ahead of the Storm Spirit, who is the highest for Hihi. Yep. And yes, oh, actually, Ice Blast coming in, he might get caught, but there's no follow up to speak of. No, the Mirana would be there with an arrow, but oh, <laughs> that arrow just needed to fly. Just a couple of units more and it might have been a hit. But either way, what I wanted to say is I really like how, um, let's say, how they focus the Rubik. Because the Rubik really is taken out instantly. The center Warner, each and every team fight, they engaged on him and brought him out of the fight. Because he, with the lift, with the Fate Ball and whatever ultimate he steals, he could have quite, um, like, yeah, quite some significance in the game. But what I don't like, and then this is about the Rubik as well, I mean, we saw that balls he play against the Storm. And it actually made a difference there. It pretty much got them the lead they have right now because they followed up with the Roshan steal pretty much. But like he's also very front line heavy every time they play, and that's the reason why he he managed to pick him off all the time. If he was in the last two team fights just a bit more behind the initiation on the Lycan instead of the Rubik, he might have I don't know stolen an ice blast or the hoof stomp or anything else, even the arrow or even that's the funny thing, even the macro pyre would have made a difference if they like you know fight in a local area so I think if Rosso just goes a bit back in his aggressiveness they will definitely fight better now oh actually speaking <laughs> of that he might get caught he gets slowed down by the dual rep has the force left though and should be fine but actually trick they're just finding all the item pick off now there's a sheep stick finished on fire three and protector they have the yule scepter on the Korean zombie so the orchid not effective anymore and the Aghanim Scepter yeah. on the Enchantress. And actually this this Hex this hex is really important. This Hex can actually make a difference because with the Hex you can take out Santa Roar on a Mirana or Storm Spirit before they go for their crucial like uh, impact in the, in the game. If he steps in and gets instantly Hexed for example the Storm, he will die so fast with all the units having Howl up etc. All the nukes. The same for the Santa Roar on a if he goes for like some multiple hero stomp but gets hexed on the way or in the way, then this is really looking bad. So let's see if he utilizes this hex pretty nicely. But now oh, Rubik might be in trouble. Talking about Storm man Storm goes in, does doesn't get the electric vortex, but Horzo finally silenced up. There's the ice blast as well. Will get the kill, but Storm's pretty just blown up like a. Well, as always, so much right click damage, the Moonlight Shadows won't help the Necro Free, they do spot them out, and Chips is gonna take a fall as well. Will they get more though? Centaur wanted to go for something, but you will have to use that. Oh, Centaur is gonna get chased down as well. Just three heroes for a single Rubik, definitely not worth it. Yeah. I don't know, maybe they also, maybe I'm absolutely wrong when they say like, you know, Rosso, just bait please, just bait. <laughs> because every time they go on the Rubik and they pay so dearly for it. They had to use so much time as well, I mean, if they wanted to go for the Rubik, the Centaur should have gone straight away from the high ground. But Storm Spirit actually had to use so much mana already to actually chase him down in the first yeah, place. This was, this was such a long sip. I don't know. But now this gives them the opening. I have to look into the buybacks. At the moment, Storm, Lycan and Enchantress, the only three heroes on the pitch who have a buyback. That means the Centaur Aurora can't come back. So they can actually get quite some significant damage. I'm actually surprised that they don't. Oh. Oh. Ice Blast is going to fight. There's the sheep onto the Chakiro, but it's not that important. The Ice Blast flies over everybody, but they still get hit. And Korean Zombie actually has to back off. The Ice Blast catches Balsam as well, Lycan. He's dropping quite low. Storm Spirit kills off the Battle Rider. Aegis gets popped, fired, orchided up on the tree and protected. They kill off the Enchantress. This, this is the opening that they were waiting for. Horrible. And no shapeshift on Lycan. He uses the BKB and he's going to TP out successfully. But still, so horrible. Did you see that was absolute miscommunication? Like the, the tree is going aggressive in hexing the Gyro. Uh, the, ch the Gyro. The, the Chakiro. And. I don't know, like, and then Lycan was about to go in, but then he was like, no, going back to the tower whatsoever, and like, I think this was a big miscommuni miscommunication coming out by those guys. Yeah, it definitely was. I mean, the Batrider, I think the biggest case for them losing this fight was that the Batrider blinked in like two or three seconds before the lasso came off cooldown. I don't know why he did it, but I guess they were just feeling so confident, having won every single fight so handedly. Yep. In the last 5 to 10 minutes. I think there was really a call missing in, in whatever voice broke they, they use. Like either they go for the tower 
or they go for the kills. I mean, the kills would have been nice, but then again, it's it's kind of dangerous. The Rubik was gone already, and like they had quite some stuff on cooldown. Like I think with the tower, they would have been better. Like I'm also kind of surprised that, like for example, the uh, the Lycan didn't just split up. Like they could have harassed the top tower there, and the Lycan just ulti on and then go for the Rex bottom because there was no cliff available, or they at least wait, was there a cliff available? No, now it is available, yeah. But, yeah, he could have definitely do some significant damage on the Rex, and that's definitely better than just, you know, getting the second tier 3 tower down, but no Rex. It definitely would have been better, and actually one really weird thing for me is that the Centaur, I mean, he rushed the Hood of Defiance even before the blink, yep. then got the Ghost Scepter afterwards, which makes sense against the Lycan, but now, only now, is he going for the Blade Mail. I think he should have gotten maybe that even above the Hood of Defiance. I don't know, yeah, it was really weird to see the Hood of Defiance coming out before the Plink. I thought he was very confident with the farm he has. Then he interrupted it shortly for the Plink. After the Plink he finished it now. It, I don't know. Not finishing the pipe, now going for the Blade Mail. Plus the Ghost Scepter. I don't, I don't know if that's like the, the smartest combination. I mean, one good thing is definitely, I mean, the, the damage you get from the double edge on yourself is magic damage so having the hood of defiance is of course helping him with his ability getting less damage there but i don't know the pipe maybe might do some difference at least then again there's not too much magic damage coming out by tricked yeah i think the blade mail actually might do a lot more at least against the lycan but then again it would be just buying time because the lycan can still shift his focus as well but well I guess we'll see because he will get the blade mail soon anyway and actually the most important pickup for he here I think is the chips thanks to his hand of mind as he has the Aghanim scepter now. Oh and now I think we might see an engagement here in mid but the problem is the Lycan is pretty far away at the moment now he's also showing himself on the top lane so if they spot something out here in mid they know they can go for it simply for the fact that they know the Lycan is still far away but yeah he, he wants the turtle he, he is standing as a team directly at the tier threes, they just want to defend this. So the question is, does Trick try to get into it, or do they just say, okay, we keep on farming, get the next Roshan, and then come again? I think they actually might be waiting for the next Rosh, although yep. it will definitely help them. But even without the Rosh, and even if they do lose the team fight, they're still doing significant damage to the buildings anyway. So if they just do it for long enough, they're gonna get the racks eventually. Yeah. Yep. The arrow just came out, I think. I missed the arrow, but I think the arrow came out to scout Roshan. So they know Roshan is not up. The question is now... I mean, Rubik here is invisible. That's really nice play with the train. Like, he's giving the units all the time invisibility so they can actually scout something out. Like, three of them are now invisible around the tree lines here. <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny to see. They're just gank ganking it up. Oh, actually, Center wants to go in and uses oh. the Stampede. What was that? What? Was that I've a drive-by no shoot? Idea. Like YOLO gangster style? Oh, and now Korean Zombie goes in, wants to get the lasso, but actually doesn't quite hit it. Moonlight Shadow is gonna come out as well as a defensive nice. measure. If and they go arrow. back now, this would be perfect. They got the Moonlight Shadow out, they got the Stampede out. All they have to do is back off a bit and wait for the next opening. Without those two ultimates, that really hurts. And oh, there's the hoof stomp onto Balsam. The blade mail already activated, but way too soon. But the ice blast actually cornered blow off the Ruby. Balsam has to activate the BKB and center. Nice overgrowth by fire though, catching three heroes. But the ice blast is stopping two of them. And Balsam drops really low, falls down to hero, ending his mega kill streak. And they're gonna get the tree end as well. And Bat Rider taking a fall on top of all of it. Four heroes, four zero, and Silver Haze stunned up as he TP. Oh, look at that attack speed! <laughs> center is like. Make this a goddamn team wipe. So 25 and 25 at 34 minutes. That cost them dearly. And bad news is Roshan is up. I don't know if he, he knows, but like if they knew they couldn't go directly into Roshan. At the moment there's no one who could tank it because the center warner is really low, but they should go for Roshan. Here, Jakiro scouts it out and he already starts with it. There comes the arrow. So they, they definitely go into it. I don't know. Center Warner seems to not be too much interested in the Roshan at the moment. He's just pushing out. But yeah, he will join his team there. And this is an easy Roshan for them. 
and actually that fight i mean i didn't actually see the storm spirit but i guess he went to the back line straight away just dealt with the bat rider maybe and once again the bat rider he blinked in didn't get the lasso and yeah, that was a just... horrible initiation and i don't know why why they didn't go back reset the fight i mean they had everything out stampede was out they had the uh, say the moonlight shadow was out all they had to do is go back wait for the next opening with those two cooldowns down that would have been a nice opening for them but instead i don't know in, in it's it's just it's just nuts <laughs> also just got hit by the ice blast agony scepter actually it's level three now as well so this ice blast is gonna do a lot of damage although rubik being level 14 he, 14 himself he has the null field maxed out so 20 percent extra magic resist but it still, does help them like, out but he only got 929 HP, so if he gets hit by that Ice Blast, he's going down to 300. Oh, and Storm, then he caught out. Oh god, he actually gonna go down. He had the Aegis, thank god for that. Ice Blast actually flying in as well, but doesn't hit any single hero. And Fire coming in, oh, the Storm Spirit hexed up and gonna fall. Nice. He does have the buyback, thank god for him, but really nice pick off there. Yeah, and wait, look, let's see. Yeah, the buyback is up for Storm, so he could come back. I guess that's their goal, like, they have to go bait that buyback out so storm is losing all that gold plus the buyback cooldown of course and actually being able to pick him off twice it's so huge i mean i bet he felt really confident to be able to escape after the ages but hex is immediate instant and macro fire just defensively by the check hero and he actually has a veil of discord now as well oh there's the hoof stomp onto balsam with the double edge as well with a nice force the fountain pkb activated by lycan there's the blade mail from the center and ice blast oh, he's gonna hit Rosa. oh only one more damage that's all he needs he's gonna tp yeah. out he needs to do some damage he's but, dead yeah. either way actually storm kills off the zombie anyway look and at Rosa. i think rubik actually might yes yeah. no. yeah. oh, no. there we go the shatter baboom because with the whale of discord like usually he would survive it if he was 100% hp he would end up at 300 but if he gets any collateral damage or of course the veil of discord then he will just shatter like rubik needs desperately bracers or anything else something to boost his hp yeah he sure does i mean if he gets ice blasted and just like one other source of damage hits him he's in so much trouble and even if he doesn't die he still has to back off and he like could go for point. drums for example easily i mean but now I think the Lycan is doing exactly what he should do, like baiting out that they come back, that they don't go for the tier 3, and he did. I mean, he's sending the creeps towards the rain tracks, but I don't know, tricked. They looked so confident, they had such a lead, and now we look into the crafts, and there you see it. This is throw one-on-one. -on -one. Tricked had a 10k advantage, and now, yeah. It's almost oh. back to zero, and now XP-wise, they didn't just lose 7,500 XP, he, he gained 7,500 yep. HP, so this they is 15k XP turnaround. That is huge, but oh, actually Mirana might be in some big, big trouble. There's the Hex from Fire. They have the Abyssal Blade as well, they use it, and they don't even need the less, so... Yeah, I mean, with those like nice solo pickoffs, they they keep themselves alive now, and you, you, you must not forget, of course, that... The Storm had a buyback used. Now Mirana has a buyback as well, but like step by step, I don't know, they might come back from this. Like I don't want to say that he, he got this, but like it's pretty impressive what kind of turnaround they managed to do so far. And yeah, as I said, the Rubik, he needs HP. There is no drums in the team yet, so going for a drums on the Rubik, it definitely would help him. By the way, he also picked up the Stampede at the moment. That's, that's a nice pickup. Yeah, that's level 3 as well. That might help them quite a lot, to be honest. But it's kind of surprising that Trick, I mean, okay, not going for the mech against the EA makes sense a little bit. But not having the pipe on their team, it's just hurting them so much. And Storm Spirit goes in, he gets the Orchid onto the Enchantress, but the attack slow is so much. And there's the Stampede, Bat Rider is giving chase and the Ice Blast actually only hits Silver Haze. Finally the Lasso comes onto the Storm Spirit, just left the Hex as well. There's the Overdrove, will they actually get some kills? You will set her up onto the Bat Rider and... Centaur actually can't get it. They need like is too much. Back. Look at this. Oh, he's going in as well. Shakira might be in trouble. The cliff actually does get popped, so the tower falls, but the racks are safe. And Mirana actually wants to chase this as well. Moonlight Shadows too, does get used. 
But fire is actually hunting for it. Kaibutsu might be in trouble or chips. No, blink out by fire. No, after all, this is actually a worthy trade. Like an enchantress for a tier 3 and I think a bit oh. damage on... <laughs> and a bit damage on the range tracks. I think that was kinda okayish trade. The funny thing, by the way, about this enchantress death, she would have been dead either way. That was the ice blast on her, and oh my god, the storm spirit. Oh yeah, there's the leech hit with the instant hex as well. They have the telekinesis if need be, but nice hoof storm coming out through also. Gonna take taken out. Orchid onto fire as well. There's the ice blast flying in. Balsam gets it, as does fire. Fire is gonna take a fall, but lasso onto the storm spirit with the right clicks like and will get the kill. Oh, and there's god. no buyback. This is actually an important kill because storm spirit is out still for two minutes. Oh Mirana going for the battery though, using the diffusal blade to slow him down. Leap as well, Starstorm, nice use, Scepter uses, and Balsam coming in with the BKB Abyssal Blade, he's gonna kill the Mirana Patrader, somehow still alive, the Stampede does come out, Nihis does at least kill the Patrader, Ice Blast, Ice Path, <laughs> not flat. <laughs> ice Path, Ice Path, doesn't matter, it's ice, it hurts. And actually it's Mirana sensitive. used the buyback as well. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it was too necessary, but I guess Lycan is gonna keep pushing, so if you're gonna buy back anyway, you might as well do it straight away, so you can farm up just a little bit. But yeah, that's the good thing now, the storm is out for another 60 seconds, so if they keep up the pressure, there's no Mirana. Oh, Mirana hexed up! They don't have the Abyssal Blade on, nice hoofstomp once again, fire, getting hit by the Ice Blast, the HWA, oh, that impetus damage, Mirana! Runs too far away from the Enchantress, and actually this might be it. The Enchantress, no buyback, Storm Spirit down for 50 seconds. They get the AA as well, they're gonna get the Centaur. They use the Lasso just in case, and Enchantress with the PKB activated. Oh god! Centaur they're just They're killing the themselves! Lightning. They're killing themselves Centaur with the Millennials! So thank you! And he's gonna go for more stampede with used as well. Use the Ghost Scepter. There's the Hoof Stomp coming out. Telekinesis is there, but Double Edge gets the kill. He wants to get Rosa as well. He might as well get it, Rosa. Can't really right click him down. No! He's so tanky. Oh my god, play the rampage! <laughs> Are you kidding me? This oh carry Centaur goodness. man. Did you see this? Lightning? Like, the Mirana gave it to him. The Mjolnir's buff on him. The Blade Mail. His return damage anyway, his passive, and he just got a goddamn rampage with all of this. Jeez. I was I was so sure he's just gonna fall and die, and he here gonna crumble, but... W what did we just see? Like, this was a damn God. rampage on a center warner. So close. So damn close. This could have been, you know, this could have been a GG for Trick there. But, like, not getting the center warner down, like, all everybody dying from residual damage. This he should have nuts. just avoided the centaur. <laughs> oh, what? Centaur rampage. Just the saving grace. 100% for he at the moment. Yeah. If it wasn't for that magnificent beast. And he's a monster indeed, man. Yep, definitely. Like, Wow, never mind. Never mind this. Let's, let's move on. We have to look to, at the crafts again because it should be up and down all the time. Like, tricked. We already said it. They they throw away 10k gold, exp uh, like 10k gold lead. It was back to zero. They had like again a small advantage after the fights, but this craft should update pretty soon. Or it actually is, it is already updated. So it's almost back to zero. But XP wise, he, he definitely in lead now. I don't know. This is soon 20k XP lead, especially after this rampage of. The center of war on her. Jesus Christ. And he now picked up an ethereal blade, man. Oh, well. I mean, he can either use it defensively on, like, a sheep target so that the Lycan can't right-click, which is actually a pretty nice usage, but then again, a Diffusal Blade would work the same way, which is the item on Mirana, so Mirana can use it aggressively or maybe save the Storm Spirit or Centaur if they initiate on him. Yeah, but this is... what a nutty play. Jesus Christ, like, I'm, I'm still absolutely... Oh. And, oh well. Storm was found by the Batrider, but was that the lasso going in there? No, it was uh, the four stuff. Yeah. yeah, it was the, just the four stuff. But still, like, this is now a standoff because at the moment, XP wise, we already showed it. He, he definitely has the advantage. Gold wise, it's, it's dead even, pretty much. So the next fight is pretty much the deciding factor. Roshan is also a factor pretty much soon because he's spawning in, I don't know, less 18 than a seconds, man. <laughs> And oh, that's a sheep stick pickup on chips now. This AA, that hand of Midas, best yeah. pickup possible, I think. They got it late. It's, it's, I don't know, tricked. They are really mad. 
because they had this game oh. so much in their hands. Why here? They don't have any gems or anything. This tree and protector would have been in so much trouble if they only had vision. Yep. And now the next fight is going to be around Rosh. And I tell you, this next fight is the deciding factor. There's only two people on the pitch who have buyback. Oh, the lasso coming out onto the Mirana. They use the stampede though. And Mirana actually like and can't hit him. There's the piece of blade. He doesn't have buyback. But there is the ice blast onto the bat rider. Bat rider is going to take a fall. Rosa drops low as well. But like and just going man mode in the background. Kaibutsu still alive. Keeping everybody else alive as well. And Balsam actually has to back off. Veil of Discord. Ice blast as well. He oh. does take a fall to Shakiro. Well, it was the shatter to be honest, but... Oh, and Shakiro actually survived him with 60 HP after killing an acro unit. So, three down for Trick, one down for he he only. So, but they're still showing here. If they're yeah, not is gonna go for more. They see Enchantress. And, oh, Rosso actually, nice four step onto the high ground. He has the ball lightning as well. So, yeah. Rosso should be safe at least, but... Trick is losing Crip here, absolutely. Like, the Lycan could buy back if he wanted to, but... I don't know. Theoretically, like the the scent could go alone into Roshan at the moment and just do him. Just get him done. Get the ages on Hihi's side, and that would be then the end of Trick. Yeah, that's cheese as well now. So yep. if Storm has the ages, or maybe actually cheese for him and the ages for Mirana. Well, anyway, it will still be so damn nice for them just having two extra lives. Oh, he just sold. Yeah, he just sold his Tranko boots and changed yeah, them into the BOTs. So, well, actually he might go for the cheese just as well, just in case, although he doesn't really need it at all, I have to say. No, but like, if this, if the center warner gets the cheese, yeah, he gets the cheese. That is pretty much like a double ages, because right now he's already the most tankiest target on the pitch. They can't really kill him at all, and with the cheese, you just don't get the center warner down. Like, the only way you, you might win this game is now, like, Red Dodo on the racks, but... For them, like Storm is also just getting too mobile at the moment. I mean, he lost quite some charges, but he's gaining now gold as well. Looking at the hero levels, like I don't know, like the like in Scent and Storm, they're 25, and now the Batch Rider Mirana, they will follow pretty much soon. Also, the AA with the Midas, he's actually a higher level than the Mirana. That's the funny part. Yeah, and I I think like this AA as well as the Centaur. They've been making those fights happen, just getting the Ice Blast, even if it hits only two heroes, it's still two heroes almost straight away out of the fight. Huh? And now the question is, I mean, what Trick is doing right now is probably the smartest thing. They sacrifice their T2 and they try to go mid, but yeah, they have to back off because they know Hihi is just much faster. And to be honest, I think we look at a GG push here, unless he, uh, unless Trick comes with an amazing fight. But look at this, the Rubik has no TP. Oh my god, the Enchantress has a TP, but it's still moving. They lose the Raxus before they even reach. Oh Any no, they have to back off because Lycan was pushing in as well. And oh, the, will they go for Pulse? Um, they go in, Center goes in there, gets the Hoof Stomp as well, just as Lycan gets the Shapeshift. They use the Ethereal Ray, PKB though by Pulse and rip the PK, TP out. Oh, they don't get it, the PKB only 4 seconds, Ice Buff into Electric Vortex. What is he doing? What Why a did mistake. He... Uh, I don't know, w what is he doing? I mean, he has a buyback, yes, okay, but he knows he has a short duration a BKB left. I mean, this BKB is, yeah, it's down to 4 seconds, so if you have a 4 seconds BKB and you don't use it immediately, you don't get out with your normal TP. But he, I don't know, he, he used the BKB, ran for a bit, and then tried to TP. Obviously, that's not gonna work, especially with the Ice Path on top of you, so... I, really I don't know. This is just completely going out of the hands of Trick. I mean, they had such a nice start, but look at this tree and how long has he had the exact same items? Yeah, he has for about 15 minutes, no progress. Like this cloak is new, but that's pretty much oh, it. Oh, actually that's... top lane, there's Storm Spirit getting dragged out. Will there be a Pistol Blade? But oh, Centaur coming in, Ethereal Blade, Stomp, yeah. getting one kill Enchantress next in line. He's trying to TP out. Electric Vortex gonna come off cooldown, not soon enough. Yeah, the Lycan is actually buying back, but look at the damage done in mid already. Tier 3 is down, Lycan using his ultimate, but they won't find anything unless maybe the AA. They might get Chips, but Chips has... Oh, BKB activated, but it's gonna run out. And there's the Abyssal Blade coming out. Chips actually might go down and will as well. Doesn't even get to use his ship stick. Yep, but he as well has buyback, so in case they want to capitalize on this push, then yeah.
I don't know, they also have to wait till like the Aegis disappears because they can't push against Cheese, Aegis, everybody having buyback and if I look at it, yeah, the cli Cliff is as well up. There's no way they break high ground here unless they have an amazing fight. They almost hexed the Stormspirit now, but Stormspirit going in, Orchid onto Rosa. They actually hex him up, so Stormspirit might be in trouble, but Centaur coming in from behind, getting the Rubik down. There's the Overgrowth coming out, killing off the Stormspirit, but he had the Aegis, Ice Blast coming out, but they're gonna fall to it. And Fire has to escape, as does everybody, as and Balsam, Electric Vortex back, taking yep. a fall as well, and I think... This is this a GG. Is, yeah. This is a GG, a hundred second out for Batrider and Lycan, yeah. There they go. They yeah, call the GG. That's this Hex on really Storm Spirit as well. There's three Hexes on here. This is so disappointing because look at what they threw away. 10k lead down to 15k on Hehe's side. Like Hehe turning this game quite impressively from 10k down to 20k for Hehe. Very nice turnaround, I have to say it. So Hehe winning this be best of three, 2 and 0. Absolutely deserved, I think. Can't say anything else. Anyways, guys, that's it at least for this best of three. The next game is Power Rangers vs. Rock's Kiss, which we also gonna cast. It's it's gonna happen at 22 CET. The stream will be online. Thanks for tuning in. We are Half TV. I'm Half Lamog. With me is Coucher. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did so, then just follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitcher, t -t Twitcher, no, Twitter, <laughs> and Twitch. Also short, Twitcher. But whatever. See you later, guys.